Class two amalgam preparation of the upper bicuspid tooth number five. Steps to follow, key fundamentals to know. Coming up next. Hello dental professional, this is Dr. Arnold Palos. Welcome to In Office to Hands On Dental Training and Consulting. We provide dental information and trends. We discuss dental technique, management, and dental success. We keep it simple for you. If you're new here in this channel, consider subscribing. Visit us at our website or at our dental practice. In this video, we are presenting an upper bicuspid, tooth number five. Essential measurements, suggested step and fundamentals. Let's get started. A very important step in any procedure that we do in restorative dentistry is be able to visualize the prep at hand. And in this case, we have to visualize where the occlusal groove, the occlusal pit, and especially, very important, the prep extension. Transferring that ability of visualization to the instruments that we'll be using. In this video, we'll be using a 56 carbide burr that has a 0.9 millimeter diameter. The very first key measurements is the 0.15 to 2 millimeter depth of the pulpal floor. Another key measurement is the 1.5 millimeter depth at the proximal axial wall. Be very careful during the extension of the prep. We could use a piece of matrix band to protect the adjacent tooth. At this point, you have not breaking contact. You are using the matrix band as a reminder not to encroach on the adjacent tooth. You could also use a wedge just as a reminder to make sure that you're not encroaching on the adjacent tooth. As you get better and comfortable with the class two amalgam preparation, you could remove the wedge and the matrix band as you extend the prep towards the adjacent tooth. There are numerous burrs that can be used in a class two amalgam preparation. A 245, a 330 carbide bird can also be used. Critical measurement with the use of a hatchet that is 1.5 millimeters in width. Using that as a guide for the size of the isthmus, which should be one millimeter. The hatchet should not be able to pass through this portion of the amalgam prep. Before extending into the proximal marginal ridge, visualize the final location of the facial and lingual wall of the proximal box in relation to the contact area. The contact needs to be just broken, 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. The cable surface margin should be nearly 90 degrees with no unsupported enamel. The walls in the occlusal portion of the class 2 should be nearly parallel or slightly convergent. The box portion should be slightly undercut in order to provide mechanical retention. The 56 carbide burr is great in smoothing out the pulpal floor and the gingival floor. The preparation should be approximately 1.5 millimeters deep at the proximal axial wall. The hatchet is used to check that measurement. The remainder of the prep will be finished with hand instruments. The pulpal wall should be prepared to a uniform depth and usually flat and parallel to the closal table. The transition between the axial and pulpal wall should be rounded or beveled. 
If beveled, the bevel should be no greater than 0.5 millimeters wide. This could be accomplished with a gingival margin trimmer. The take home message for this exercise, keep your instrument sharp and minimize the equipment that you use. Question for today. What other equipment would you use on a class two Malcolm Pro? Make sure you go ahead and comment down below and we'll see you next time.